Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You are at war. You are. You are at war. Now, I'm not talking about a war similar to what Ukraine and Russia are going through, or even what's going on in the Gaza Strip. We're not in a physical war and battle between our country and another nation, but we are at war. And it's a dangerous thing. Bodies are, are piling up all around us. We're being attacked from every side. It is a gruesome and horrific battle. One that, that is costing more than just our physical life. Because it's a war, it's a battle for our very soul. From the moment that God brought you into this family, whether it was at the moment when we were baptized as a child, or when the word of the Lord came to us and the Holy Spirit created that faith in our hearts, from that moment God marked you as his very own. He made you part of his family. He gave you that wonderful inheritance, that forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. But since that very moment, the enemy has turned his, his sights on you. From that moment when the Lord Made you his. Satan turned his plan, put you in his scope as his crosshairs firmly planted on you, looking and waiting and attacking to try to drive you away from him. That's the war, that's the battle that is going on. And so as we fight in this war, Will you live? Or will you die in action? Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to take a stand on the evil day. And after you have done everything, to stand. It is important when we are faced with a war, when we are faced with a battle, that we want to make sure that we know who the real enemy is. Because if we don't know who the real enemy is, we don't know what kind of tools and weapons that we need. We don't know what kind of tactics are supposed to be employed. happened before where you didn't know the real enemy. In the Korean War, when the United States pilots were going up against what they thought were North Korean pilots, it all changed when they found out that the person that was actually in the cockpit was a Russian pilot. Ones who were better trained, had better tactics than the Korean pilots, and so there they had to change and they were flying based on knowing the real enemy. And the same is true with our spiritual war. We need to know who that enemy is, who the real enemy is. It's easy to start seeing our enemy in so many places, right? We, we think that, that our enemy is that person we work with who seems to, to cut us off when we're trying to advance at every step of the way. Maybe it's that sibling of ours, the one that like, we just we can't seem to get along with. Maybe we see our enemy in that neighbor. You know, the one who you left your trash can out one extra day and they called the HOA. Maybe you see that enemy even in one of your brothers and sisters in church. 
No matter the decision, no matter what's going on, you just, you're not in agreement. Maybe you think that enemy, and you see that enemy in today's economy. Or maybe it's that kind of smashed or broken down vehicle. Maybe that enemy is that health problem. All of these different enemies that we see, are we seeing the true enemy? The real enemy? Are we seeing the one who is actually in the cockpit? Paul tells us, for the struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. See, sometimes Satan and his evil spiritual forces, they utilize those things in our world that cause us difficulty, that cause us struggle, that try to drive us away from our Heavenly Father, try to drive us away from our God. But who is the one driving the enemy? Who is the real enemy? I cannot. Satan. Satan. And all of these things, that is the real enemy that we are facing. And when we know the real enemy, then we know the right equipment and tools we need to, for combat. See, tanks and missiles and guns and planes, that's, that's not what's going to defeat Satan. Because we're saying it's spiritual warfare. And so what do we have at our disposal? Which Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to take a stand on the evil day and after you have done everything, to sing. The very equipment that we need to stand against sin. But notice again what our goal in this battle is. What our goal in this war is. In most wars, in most battles, it's to go and attack and to defeat the enemy. But guess what? That's not actually our goal. Because that's already been done. <laughs> Victory has already been won. The accuser no longer has the ability to accuse us because guess what? Christ has already taken care of that for us. We've already been put on trial. We've already been convicted. We've already been sentenced to death. And Jesus took that entire punishment on himself. When Jesus lived a perfect life in our place that we couldn't do, when Jesus suffered and died on that cross, taking on himself the very punishment of sin and death and hell that we deserve, Christ took crushed, destroyed the enemy. <clears throat> Victory is ours. So then what is our goal while we're still waging war? Because though Christ has won for us, that wonderful gift of forgiveness has given us that wonderful gift of righteousness, we are still here on this earth, not wearing our crown of perfection there in heaven. And so what is our goal for this war It's to stand. It's to stand firm against the assaults of Satan. But how do we do that? How do we stand against all that Satan has to throw at us? As you say, to put on the full armor of See, because of what Christ has done for us, Christ has covered us in his perfection. Christ has covered us in his protection. Christ has basically brought us into to his sphere, to his circle. And then, as Satan continues to try to coax us out of Christ's protection, we need to stand firm in our Savior, to stand firm in Christ. And how do we do that? We put on the full armor of God. What does that mean? Well, he tells us what that armor is. He says to put on the belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. The readiness of the gospel of peace. Like sandals on our feet. To 
holds firm that shield of faith to adorn that wonderful helmet of salvation and to, to wield the sword of the Spirit. To put on that belt of truth. I understand that as a soldier, to understand that as, as a battle, part of your battle equipment, it's more than just something that holds up your pants. That belt was one that would actually hold, help hold the breastplate in place. It was one that would make sure to keep everything off your legs so you wouldn't trip. It was the thing that held your sheath or your sword, your weapon. It also helped protect your lower organs. And when we talk about the belt of truth, we're talking about that objective truth of what Jesus has done for us. That objective truth revealed in Christ, revealed in His Word, that is, that is such the important and most essential adornment that we have in our armor. That we hold on to that truth. He says, put on that breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate that covers what the most vital that breastplate of righteousness, that righteousness that Christ himself has clothed us with. God has said, be perfect as I know you're going to perfect. And we have been, we have been, Christ has given us that righteousness, that which then protects our heart. He says, make sure that you're on solid ground. As he says, make sure that your feet are ready, ready. They're ready to speak with the gospel of peace, hide like those shoes. Any soldier knows that you need to have your, fir your footing firm. And so that includes the shoes that you put on. If you go on any hike, think about when you're rolling your ankles and stuff, you need proper shoes. And God says you put on the, the readiness, the gospel of peace. So that when we have that battle, we are able to stand our ground, we are able to stand firm. We're supposed to then hold on strongly to that shield of faith. And we're not talking about just this little tiny little shield thing. We're talking about a shield that when you're standing in this war and battle, it covers you almost from head to toe. So that no matter what Satan throws at you, no matter what the enemy throws at you, it is able to reject it. It is able to defend you. It is that wonderful faith where we have received the gift of forgiveness where God has given us access to himself through you are wonderful faith. It's that faith that guards and protects from all the flaming arrows of Satan and all of his servants. And as you're standing then behind your shield, strongly implanted, as you're looking over the shield, you need, of course, guard the middle. To have on that wonderful helmet of salvation. That salvation that God has gifted you, that which gives you that wonderful head of joy and confidence that we are guarded, that we are protected, that we get to stand firm. And then, no soldier goes to battle without weapon. And God has given us that very weapon. As we have that sword of the Spirit. That which the Spirit Himself has given us. That which the Spirit Himself has written for us. That is that wonderful Word of God. That Word of God that is sharper than any double-edged sword which is able to drive in to break in the heart, to cut so deeply that we use to not only defend, but also to share. There it is, the full armor of God that God gives us to strongly stand against the assaults of Satan and all of his evil spirits. But there's one more piece of equipment that God actually gives us and encourages us. Because it doesn't matter how well ordained you are. It doesn't matter how well protected it may be. There's also the importance of being alert. Paul says, at every opportunity, pray in the Spirit with every kind of prayer and petition. Stay alert for the same reason, always persevering in your intercession for all the saints. See, if the soldier is not alert, it doesn't matter how well he quits, it doesn't matter how well armed he is, if you're not alert, the enemy will attack at those times. And 
the same is looking for those opportunities to be able to catch you off your guard. And that's why we have this wonderful gift. Yes, it's not maybe a piece of the armor itself, but it's a per it's a piece of equipment that we absolutely need to stay alert, and that is to pray, to pray always, to pray firmly. So when we stand in that wonderful sphere of protection of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has done it all for us, who has won the victory for us, we pray. We pray that the Lord continue to give us strength. May we not let our armor go rusty. May we not let our sword go, go dull. May we pray. May we be ready. Because Satan is attacking. Your friends, put on the full armor of God. That wonderful armor that he has provided, that he gives to you to wear. Put on the full armor of God and stand. Because we know then that when Satan does attack, and he will attack, when that true enemy comes for us to pull us away from God, we get to stand firm. And as the Lord promises, with his armor, we will not be overcome. The victory is already ours. Won for us by Christ. And as we now wait for his coming again, may we stand. Put on that form, that belt of truth, that breastplate of righteousness, those sandals, the gospel of peace. Hold firm to that shield of faith. Adorn that helmet of salvation and wield that sword of the Spirit and pray. Put on the full armor of God and stand. Amen.